this little light of mine. We make things so over. We overcomplicate everything. And Jesus is not hard. It's so simple. All you got to do is worship him, man. And those little songs, we take them for granted because we, we, we just we skip past it. But I'll share a real quick story with you guys, and then we'll get to what we're going to get to. But uh, I was a little boy, man, and I, my dad could probably tell the truth behind this, and he probably shouldn't. But um, I was a little boy, and my granny used to come get me at night, and I'd stay with her. And she, uh, one night, I don't know what happened, but I don't know if they wouldn't let me go or something, you know, what, uh, what was going on, but, or she was late doing something, but it was, it, it was dark. I mean, I don't know how old, I was probably not much older than her, but I remember I wanted to go with my granny so bad. I didn't know, I mean, it wasn't nothing wrong, but I just wanted, that's where I wanted to go. So we lived in a little, a little house on, on Pumpkin Brown Hill there in South Lebanon. And I remember singing this little light of mine. Over and over and over, and then you know we didn't we didn't have cell phones and stuff like we do now. So if they called her, I don't know, they must have called her from my phone or something. But one way one way or the other, she got there. She showed up to get me, and I, they got me out of bed to go with her. And for some reason, man, I just uh, earlier this week it kind of I was watching or over the weekend. The faith of a child, man. God tells us in the Bible, we can have the faith of a child. Amen. Yep. You know, it's uh, I didn't doubt one minute that God was going to pray. That's so simple. It, all I want was my granny, but that's the most important thing to me at that age, at that night, at that time. And I sung over and over until she come. And I don't, I said that would be something I would probably never know. But did they call that? Did you guys call it? You remember? <laughs> No, man, but I watched these kids, and we were at this uh, camp thing over the weekend, and I watched these kids late after the surface was over at 13, 14 years old, and they stood out in the field. Everybody else was playing ball, and doing, but there was about five of them standing there praying for each other. I mean, that's, wow. a, that's what we need. That's what God's going to do. That's where we're at, amen? Yeah. That's what, God, we need a nation that's going to rise up of those kids. Alright, I wasn't playing, like I said, that's just get that for a bonus, I guess. <laughs> or maybe I get a bonus, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Tonight, man, I want to talk to you guys. The Lord, the Lord put a couple things on me, and I just... Uh, after last night and the service we had and the way the spirit was flowing, I just try to listen. I always try to listen to him, but I woke up this morning and just wanted to do something. I just wanted to do what the Lord had on me. And, you know, right now, we're living in what I think is the end times, and most people say that it is, and we can, we can feel how you want, but... Uh, there's four signs of the end times that I, that I was looking at. It says, the sign of deception, well, number one. Number two, disputes among nations. Number three, the sign of devastation with the famines and sickness and earthquakes and islands catching on fire and moving around mysteriously. You know, I, I don't know. But uh, the fourth one's deliverance and tribulation. That first one's what, what's set with me. Disruption. If you guys would, um, I'm going to pray for you. And um, we get a scripture here, but uh, if you would just bow your heads and Father God, Lord, I ask that you just come before us tonight, God. Lord, give me the words that you want spoken, Father, Lord. God, I ask that you would just bless everybody in this room, Lord. Let it be something that, that can help them, God, for I know that I didn't come up with this, Lord, so it's you. So whoever it's for, God, let it bless them so, they, so, they, so that they know that, God, you're speaking to them, Father God. I ask that you would just use me, Lord. In whatever way you will see possible, God. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, and let it be be done. In your name I pray. Thank in you. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to try and do this without messing this part of it up. I apologize. But the, the word uh, disruption is what got me. And that's what I started looking at. And you can look for the definition of disruption. And you 
get all kinds of things, but um, well, I did mess it up. There we go. Disruption. To cause to stray, to lead astray, to lead aside from the right way. Go down here. It says lies. A word that I equivocate, equivocations, which are making indirect and uh, contradictory statements. Concealment, omitting information, exaggeration, overstatement of stretching the truth, understatements of minimizing the truth. If I, didn't, if I don't describe Satan, I don't know what does. And especially this world that we live in, the time that we're living in. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me. I'm going to read a little bit longer than I normally do, but I'll, I'll do it quick. And uh, we'll go on. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, uh, 1 through 13. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast in the, of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the, tree, of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat, eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So then the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman... Who you, gave, who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. The Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So, deception, just like it says. Thing is, is that this time that we're living in, Satan is, deception is part of everything he does. And the thing that Satan wants to do is separate us from the people who make us strong. No new tricks. There's nothing new. He's been doing the same thing over and over for years. So what he did, he got Eve by herself. And got her to eat from that tree. Yeah, yeah. What if she eaten from it with Adam was standing there with her? I don't know. You don't know. There's a whole lot that goes. You can get real deep into this. But my thing was that she was deceived because she got off. The, the, the biggest part of it, she was by herself. And he was using what he does, and he hasn't stopped doing that. God's biggest thing, or Satan's biggest thing, is to separate you and keep you by yourself. I don't know. I, I told these these guys were we we had a men's thing one time, and if you ever watch birds, the the birds that fly in the V, the the, the geese or whatever, yeah. they fly in a V because that is first of all, it, it's not it takes the wind off of them, so they don't have to fly as hard. But the other part of it is for, for protection. And you see these little blackbirds along the side of the road that you see this gobs of them that looks like a, like blacks out the, the area. They're all in that big area right there because that's protection for them. They're smaller prey. So what we have to do 
is we have got to stay together in these times that are here. The Bible says in Proverbs 27 and 8, it says, Like a bird that wanders from his nest, a man who wanders from his place is lost. Satan goes, does anything he can to get us by ourselves. And a lot of times, they'll use things that we don't see as what he's doing. He, he, he uses to deceive us. Sickness. I'm not talking like you got a headache. I'm talking like you cancer or whatever it might be. Some sickness. He gets you, he gets you sick. And the next thing you know, everybody can't come see you. You got to separate yourself because, because they're because you're too sick or you don't feel like it. Or you know, you can't, you're susceptible to disease or whatever. But what he does, then he all of a sudden, while you're while he's separating you from the people, from the people who make you stronger, right. next thing you know, depression sets in. Right. He starts using another tactic. A little depression. Then you're sad. And then you start thinking, man, man, I this is horrible. I, I, I don't even want to live. Yeah. You know, that depression goes to an anxiety or an attack of when am I gonna die? You know. And he's got you down, and he'll 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 keep you down as long as you let him. But you know, as we know as Christians and people who are saved, we know we got somebody to call upon. We got a Lord. We got a Lord that parted the sea. We got a Lord that's got all the power. He can take away sickness. He can take away health. He can do whatever he wants to do because he's all God. Amen. And the thing is, is that. No matter what Satan tries, and no matter what we talk about here, you got to remember who you serve. Amen. You serve one, the one God, the King of this world. Amen. And you let Satan do what he wants for a little bit, but there's a time coming when it's going when it's going to come to an end. Addiction, man. I, I don't know if you guys. I got I got friends that are addicted to things that, you know, I was addicted to things that that, that the Lord has taken away from me. That, but you know, addiction starts with you know it might just be it might just be alcohol. A drink here with to have a good time. A drink there, you know, then it turns into uh, to something that you got to depend on because the stress of, of life that Satan throws at you or, or the devil throws at you. When you're out there and you're lost, you know, you're, you're never, you don't have the joy that we have here. You know, when, we're, when, you're, when you're right living around the Lord, you got a joy that they just they don't understand, but they're searching for it. They're searching for it, Fred. And when you find it. Like they said last night, once you get a hold of Pentecost, you don't let go. Because there ain't nothing going on. There ain't nothing like it, man. There ain't nothing like the Pentecost and the, and the feeling that the Lord gives you. He just, to me, it, it just it seems repetitive, but he does the same things over and over. And one of the things that, you know, when he separates us is... He wants to take your friends. And I asked myself, over the last 10 years, say, say 10 years ago, who was your best friend? Some of you are older, and you either lost that person or you've lost, uh, I, I know some people have lost a couple of best friends, you know? And, but those of us that are younger, who, where are they now? Are they still your best friend? Some of you, yes. You go back 20 years ago, who was your best friend then? What would you have done for that person? And they're gone. Some of them are a bad was a bad thing, but a lot of them it's just it's just life. It's the seasons. We have we have seasons in life, whether you're saved or not saved. You have seasons of friendships. God will bring people in and out of your life. Sometimes that might be when you're lost to get you directed to where He wants you to go. Sometimes it might be when you're just you're 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 living right, but that you got a bad influence. We got to set things down sometimes. You know, last week, I, the reason that I've kind of went to this is that I spent, I was telling Charlie and uh, John, I spent probably four or five hours one day. I was trying to get myself, I started working on this early, but I spent four or five hours of different people that God has sent to me to minister to. You know, whatever way that might be, whether it's just listening to them or advise them, you know, give them what I think, you know, what the Lord, what the Bible says. I don't have an opinion, so I try to tell them what the Bible tells, you know. 
And God, God wants those people. One of the biggest things that they don't understand is who their friends are. And it's like, man, you're doing good. You're doing great. You know, a lot of them. And, but they still want that tie to the world. And you, you cannot over and over. You cannot sit at the table with the Lord and set the table with demons. You cannot drink from the same cup. It don't work that way. And that Bible says that. And it's one of the things that gets me is that we try to change the Bible. People try to change the Bible. And we're living in a world where people want to change the Bible. Hyper grace. You can do what you want to do. Everything's going to be all right. You're going to make it to heaven because you're a good person. If I hear I'm a good person because I'm going to go to heaven one more time, I, I just want to be like, it, it drives me nuts. I mean, I can't help it. But at the same time, you want to have great, you want to have compassion for them. And you want you want them to understand that, hey, good people are going to go to hell. There could be a lot of good people in hell. Because if you if you don't do what you're supposed to do, that book it, it, it's not it's not all it's all all rainbows in here. You know? <laughs> it's not all rainbows. God's a God of what He says, and He'll do what He says He does. Just like He tells you when you're sick and you can't get up, when He tells you to get up, He'll get you up. Right. If you believe that you know that whatever's going on in your life that you can give it to Him, He said He'll take care of it. Right. He said, "Cast your burdens." Your heavy laden burdens on me, and I will take care of them. And tell you, whenever you, when you're lost and you're confused, he said, "Seek me, and I will direct you. I will show you which way to go." Amen. He says, "Lord, call me Lord. All you have to do is cry out, Lord, and I will be there." Yes, Amen. That's right. There you go. That's the Lord. Come on. Yes. Yeah. 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 My question, I guess, one of the things that when I ask them to is who are your friends? Because not everybody that you are friends with on Facebook or Instagram, they're not all your friends. We live in a generation where kids think that people are their friends when they're just an acquaintance, if they even know them at all. And they tell them things that they shouldn't tell them because then they use it against them because Overall, we live in a world that's consumed by evil right now. One of the things we get is you don't have to go to church to be saved. Come on, come on, Reverend. <laughs> You're right. You don't have to go to church to be saved. But just like you said, those parables, I tell people all the time, I don't have to go to, I don't go to the gym to get stronger. I have, but I have to go if I want to get stronger. You know what I'm saying? I can go and be Craig and be the same as I can, you know, at home or do whatever. But when I go to the gym, there's more things for me to get there. You know what I'm saying? I've got a bench press and some weights at the house, but I don't have a pull down. I don't have a cable crossover. I don't have all that stuff that, that you need to make your whole body strong you know so when you don't go to church like to to get around like-minded people like the bible says he says go and strengthen yourself at that church with those people because the moment that you don't hang around with those people guess who's coming those old people that you ain't supposed to be with those people that left you because they didn't like that you like jesus or because you told them because you go you didn't go with them on saturday night because you come to church you know, you went to church here. You went to church on Thursday or a Tuesday at the revival, or you don't you don't have money to throw in for the beer anymore. You don't give them that money anymore. You know, those are the people who's going to come around because Satan's going to send them to you because they're just like little gnats, man. They just they they know they know when something's wrong. You know. We I don't know, man. I, I think that we we got to make. One of the, I, and, I, and I, I skip over this all the time, but a verse that, that you wonder sometimes, it's like, I'm supposed to, I hear this all the time, is that, well, I don't want to leave those people because I want to lead them to Jesus. I'm glad you do. So do I. But here's the thing. Just because you want to lead them to Jesus, don't mean you're strong enough to lead them to Jesus. If they got problems that you can't handle and you're not, that you just got rid of yourself, it's hard to get past that. And what they start to do is they start to bring you down. I've seen it so many times. 
so many times with the drugs and with the with the things like that where they go back with good intentions. They get cleaned up. They love they love the Lord and God's helping them. And I'm not saying that they can't be a witness to that person, but sometimes your witnessing ain't me hanging out with you. You know, sometimes my witnessing is you see what I do. You know, show me. Let's see your fruits. Let them see your fruits. What you're bearing. You know what what you're what you're bringing to the table instead of you know what you used to bring to the table. You know, and that's what we've got to deal with. And that's not just people. That's just wherever we're at. Who are at work? You know, Charlie. I know you had trouble. I know I've had some trouble here lately where somebody wants to say something, but you know what? They can't they can't say nothing about my actions and what I do. Right. And, you know, if I if I got something wrote on on the, on the side of my little card in my toolbox, you know, it says greater is me is in greater is he is in them. Me that's in the world, you know, they have to see that and they start to wonder what's he talking about, right. you know. But at the same time, what can they do to me for that work, you know? Right. It's like I can write what I want. Yeah. You can write what you want in your toolbox. Yeah. You know, you can put whatever that is up there that I wouldn't even want anybody to see. But at the same time, it's your right to, you know. Yeah. When you pick your friends, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Bible tells us, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness and with lawlessness? And that communion has it with the light, with the darkness. In verse 15 it says, it even goes to say, what accord does Christ have with Satan? There's a line. They don't go like this. Everybody can get up there and tell you, hey, go, you can do this, you can do that. Come to our church and do this. Come, this church does this. Let me tell you, that church that's doing this and doing that, they got bigger problems in the church that's got five people in it. That is going straight ahead. Because I'm going to tell you what, when you start looking to the left and looking to the right, you're going to get in trouble. You, get, you look to the left, look to the right, next thing you know, you turn around, next thing you turn, you don't even know where you're going. Tell you what kind of people I'm And I can tell you, you two right there, you, you're my kind of people, man. And I'm not saying that because you're here, but they're people who love the Lord. And they're people who, if I ain't talked to Charlie in six weeks, I called him one night at 1230. <laughs> and I wasn't drunk. I wasn't, he's like, you know, it wasn't those days. It wasn't, a, I need you to come pull me out of the ditch, Charlie, or I need you to whatever, Charlie. It was, Charlie. I can't get my mind right on the spot what I'm, what I'm about to preach on one day. <laughs> and he said, well, he didn't say, well, you need to preach on this. Or, hey, you should look at this. We well, just talked. And the Lord shows up. The Holy Spirit. We, got, we both are spirit filled, see. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's where you get your preaching from. You know, I, this, honestly, yeah, come on. I, I don't know why I'm telling you all this today. Because it really, it was not what I thought. But, you know. I, I got. I believe and trust in the Lord. I got faith that whatever it is I had to say here, He needed for somebody, no matter how it came out, you know. Yeah. And I, I've learned that. I've learned that, man. This Bible right here, faith, yeah. obedience, right. and relationship. Yeah. Faith, obedience, relationship. Yeah. If you'll focus on those with your life, faith. You can't. Nothing in this Bible makes sense if you don't have faith. Because it, 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 you got to have faith. But once you get faith and you start to get the things that this Bible's talking about and you understand, you start to get that Holy Ghost. You start to get that feeling. You get that, hey, don't do this, amen. Hey, don't do that, amen. Hey, don't go there, amen. You know, brother, you, that's when when it gets real. And then you start to develop that relationship. That relationship that we talk about over and over. You know, you know it's, it's so sweet. But it gets even sweeter when you make it a friendship. When you get like Abraham or you get like David and everything that you do, you run by God. I don't care if you're going to buy something, if you're going to talk to somebody. When you hear that voice of the Lord and you do what he says, that's when you're starting to get it. That's when it's coming. You can get up. You can do whatever you got to do. You can run around and holler. Do whatever. If that's not what God wants you to do, you won't do it. I've learned that. I've seen that real quick. That I'm a little bit different. But God made me a little bit different for a reason. Because he don't need somebody else. We've got Sammy, Brother Sammy Reed. We've got Jensen Franklin. We've got uh, Tommy Bates. But we never had a Craig Roberts. There you go. And, you know, I just, I got, I got to deal with that myself sometimes. 
My dad's got to deal with it because he, he had me. So. But I tell you, I want people like those too. I want people like that that I know that when I get ready, when I find up on the mountaintop, they'll stand on the mountaintop with me. If I got to look now, if I see the valley, I'm going to the valley, I'll call them and tell them I'm going in the valley. They'll do everything they can to hold me from sliding down that hill. That's right. They'll come to me, they'll run and meet me at the bottom of the hill. Or they like the man who was the paralyzed man, the paralytic, who they say, you see all these little things popping up on social media because now everybody knows about Jesus because of social media. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But it says, find people who will tear the roof off for you. I want people who will tear the roof off for me, Jesse. I don't want people who will just go up there and stand on the roof. I want to tear the roof off because i got to get in there. When I'm down and I'm out, I can't move. I gotta get in there. I gotta get in there where Jesus is. And if all those other people want to stand there and look at Jesus. I'm there to see what He wants. I'm there to see where I'm gonna worship with Jesus. You know, we get in these places and they get so filled, man. And you're like, you see people just sitting there. You'll see people. You'll see people slain in the spirit like last night, running all over the place. And you'll see people there who want to crack a smile. You need to get up there because you're missing something. You're missing something. I just tell you, it's, I, the main thing that God really just put on me is that we've got to, we've got to wake up. And, and the biggest thing is when we get, when, we, when we're starting to get down, we've got to call upon each other. We are, we, we've got to unite and we've got to get stronger. We talk about it. We've been talking about it. But there, when we get to heaven, man, there is one race, one religion, one God. Amen. It doesn't matter who the rest of them are. Longer. And if they can't figure it out, we got to tell them about it. Because here's the thing. If we tell them about it and they choose not to come, that's on them. That's right. But when we don't tell them nothing, that's on us. Right. You know, there's so many people out there who think their sin is so big. They've done so much. I'm going to tell you that there is no sin Amen. that will send you to hell automatically. There's no automatic sin that goes to hell. Because the blood of Jesus will cover any Amen. sin Amen. that you have ever committed. Amen. There's no sin greater than the blood of Jesus. Amen. But I tell you what there is, though. Pride. When you won't bow down yeah. your knee and confess him, Lord, Come that's going to get you a ticket to hell. Yeah. The gates are going to swing wide open for the fool who does not bow down and accept him as their, as their Savior. Amen. I'm going to tell you, that same person, Amen. they're miserable. Right. These people, there's people miserable walk around this world. And some of them, they're just going to stay miserable because they, they will not do it. The Bible tells us they, they just, their pride will not allow them. There will actually come a time where God is not going to allow them and where they've missed the boat. And I'm not, you know, those people, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't try to be mean to people who just sit. Some people can't get up, and I understand that. But there's a lot of people that if you put a $50 up here for them to come get it, you can see them get out of that chair, buddy. They'll get up. Put your find find where find find your goals. Find find your priorities. I guess. What, what's your priority in life? I don't care if you're twenty or seventy or a hundred. What's your priority in life? If you're breathing, your priority's got to be the Lord and getting people to heaven. I don't care if you got if it's however you do it. You've got to get. We got to get out and get the word to people. These young kids, man, we're living in a world that they're starving. They're starving. They've been fed so much crap. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but they have. They've been fed so much. You, you can be this, you can do that. You're a trans, you, 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 might, you don't know what gender you are. I don't know who said it, but you want to find out what gender you are? Go to the bathroom and look, because that's it. There ain't no other answers. They, you're going to find the answer you're going to find right there. That might upset somebody the rest of the world, but that's the way that it is. That Bible said I created man and woman. He didn't say you get to choose. If he got to choose, we got to choose a lot of things. Like you said, Charlie, we, we, we couldn't even, we couldn't make the right choice. We don't know how many decisions and how many things God takes care of us before we even get there. You know, we, those, those children of Israel, I, last time I think I talked about, you know, there is not one place that you go that where they set their, where they pitch their tent that God did not go before them because they follow those clouds, either the fire by night or the cloud by day. But they went wherever they went, wherever they went, it was behind God. If we will get behind God and focus on what He, uh, focus on Him, our world is going to get better. It may not get better for everybody, but it's going to get better for us. Because soon, very soon, it's going to be over. I'm closing, but um, I, I want to. This kind of came late to me, but and Jesus said to them, "Take heed, no one deceives you." For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. 
and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. I'm sorry, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are beginnings of the sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation, kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive, again, deceive many. And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. The love of many is growing cold, man. You see these, I don't, I don't want to say his name, but there's some big time pastors who are, they're folding, man. They're folding. Because all of a sudden, they didn't just get up there and preach the word and collect your check. Like they have been doing for years, you know. They started out loving God. Now I'm sure they do somewhere, but they gotta refocus. They gotta find their focus. They gotta get back on that cloud that I was talking about. You know, they're Amen. looking to the left and looking to the right, like I was saying earlier. And man, they, 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 that's the devil. That's the devil. They, they, they've been doing it long enough. They should know that um, what's happening. But we see and we're seeing these these uh, these earthquakes anywhere and these things catching fire and just the most random things. They're not random. Everybody wants to argue and talk about who's going to be the president, who's going to be this. It doesn't matter because it's God's plan. Whatever his plan is, is how it's going to be. There ain't nothing you can do about it, Jesse. Ain't nothing you can do about it, Fred. We can do whatever we can say, what we want to say, tell whatever we want to tell. But when it all comes down to it, just like you get up and take your breath every morning, you get up and take your breath every morning. It's God's plan. When he says it's time to go, it's time to go. Last week, I about plummeted off a 35-foot wall or whatever it was. But you know what? When I hit when I hit the ground, when I hit the whatever it was I was on there the upper pavement thing there before I you know I looked down and I was like whoo thank you Lord Amen. thank you Jesus Amen. thank you Father God I bless oh thank you Lord I just began to pray and you know what I, I might have got a little tongues when that fellow beside me probably thought oh what is he doing <laughs> <laughs> well I can tell you what I'm doing buddy. I'm thanking the Lord because yes, it didn't even, it, the thing that sat with me and it took me a while is that I don't want to leave here. I don't want to leave here at all because I got things to do. But when God tells me it's time to go, it'll be my time to go. It wasn't my time to go. And I felt peace that if I'd have come in, if I'd have hit that ground, then God took me out of there. I know what I was doing last. I was telling that man about Jesus. I was explaining to him that it doesn't matter who the president's going to be. It doesn't matter. I hope whoever gets whatever. Until God, if it's God's plan for this country, like it says it's going to, then it's going to come to an end. It's coming to an end. I know who wins. That's the thing. That's the thing. A lot of these people don't know who wins. So they're all upset and they're watching their TVs all the time and listening to this, listening to that, man. Right here's you. Right here's you. Here's what's real. Everything else, social media, media, it's all tricks, man. Satan's using them to keep the deception moving and to keep everybody tore up. He wants to, if it, if it isn't black and white, if it isn't the vaccines, they're coming out with something else now, it's another, you're going to need a vaccine for this. You're going to need to, we're going to be right back into the same mix. Put a mask on, don't put a mask on. And then what they're going to do, they're, they're trying to take our money. They're trying to do things with a dollar. They're trying to, they want you to put a chip in your hand. Everybody's like, well, that's the mark of the beast. No, it's not the mark of the beast. Not yet. What it is is a trial, though. They want you to. They want to see who's going to who's going to take it for free. If they're going to give people twenty four hundred dollars, I don't know if y'all have seen this or not. I'm probably rambling, but twenty four hundred dollars a month. I would say I don't even know what the works out to be. But there's people that I work that I've worked with that I, that I know that twenty four hundred dollars a month is probably almost what they make. Some of them more than that if they're on, if they're drawing benefits or something. And it's like, man, you won't give the people on an island that's burned up. Seven, you want to give them seven hundred dollars for all everything they lost, but you want to give people who nothing's happened to them twenty four hundred dollars a month, not to go to work, just to put a chip in your hand. Uh, don't make sense, does it? You're killing me. You know what does make sense? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's what makes sense. And if you don't know that, man, you gotta, you know, you you need to figure it out. I, I look around here, you know, and I know. That, 
Most John, I know you're, you're right with the Lord. And I just, I, my thing was tonight, God wanted somebody to know that we are headed for some times that we may not like. It may not be comfortable. We've had a comfortable life. You know what I mean? As bad as, you know, I don't care how bad your life was. It ain't going to be nothing like it was if, if, this, if this goes down the way if we're here. I'm a pre-tribulation guy, so I'm hoping I'm right. But if not, you know what? They're going to have to just chop my head off because it's coming. But I'm going to tell you what. One thing when I, when I know, when, I, when I'm not a father, when the, somebody knocks me out in the spirit right there and I know that I didn't go down on my own, I know there's a God. I know there's a God and he's here and he's where I'm going. And he going, and it's like you go to different places and he's there because he wants to be. He wants us. He wants to spend time with us. We've got to we got to clear our schedules like she said last time. We got to slow down. We got to slow down. The world's moving so fast, man. So fast. This these technology, this stuff. If we will slow down, other people will have to slow down with us. And those are the people that God wants because He'll bring them. He'll make them slow down if we we'll make an effort. And we'll Amen. we'll see people coming into these churches that 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 we've never seen before. Amen. And we got to open our doors and we got to look. We got to look at them and we can't look at them twice, man. We got to look at them and we got to love them. We gotta love them. I don't care what they what they're doing, what they believe, or how they look. Because if if you'll just show them some love, Amen. God will use it. Amen. He'll use it. He'll apply it, man. He'll, he'll do what he does because he's God, and it's Amen. his plan. Nobody else's. Amen. Nothing else adds up. Jesse, buddy, that's really about all I got, man. I,